function of n variables x1 through xn. Assume f has continuous second-order partial derivatives. The function f x1, x2 through xn is convex if and only if its n by n hash matrix is positive semi-definite for all possible values of x1 through xn. If x1, x2 through xn is concave if and only if its n by n hash matrix is negative semi-definite for all possible values of x1 through xn. What is a hash matrix? What is positive semi-definite? And what is negative semi-definite? The hash matrix is a square matrix of a second-order partial derivatives of a function. For an n-variable function f, x1, x2 through xn, its hash matrix is n row by n column. For the element in the i-th row and j-th column, its value is the second-order partial derivative of f with respect to xi and xj. Therefore, this element is the second-order partial derivative with respect to x1 and x1 again. This element is the second-order partial derivative with respect to x1 and x2, and so on. If the second-order partial derivatives are all continuous, then the Hessian is a symmetric matrix. That means Hij is equal to Hji. Let's calculate the hash matrix of this example. x1 minus x2 squared plus 2 times x3 squared. It has three variables, x1, x2, and x3. Let's first calculate the first order partial derivative with respect to x1. It's 2 times x1 minus x2. Then we calculate the second order partial derivative with respect to x1 and x1 the second-order partial derivative with respect to x1 and x2, and the second-order partial derivative with respect to x1 and x3. They are 2, minus 2, and 0, respectively. This is the first row of the hash matrix. Similarly, we can calculate the second and third row of the hash matrix. Finally, this is the hash matrix of this function. Now let's check the concepts like positive semi-definite and negative semi-definite matrices. The n by n hash matrix H is positive semi-definite if the scalar resulted from this matrix multiplication Z transpose times H times Z is non-negative for all non-zero column vector Z of n real numbers. The n by n hash matrix H is negative semi-definite if the scalar resulted from this matrix multiplication is non-positive for every non-zero column vector Z of n real numbers. This explanation still seems complex and difficult to understand. Let's try to see an example. This is the Hessian we got from the previous example. We will determine whether it is positive semi-definite or negative semi-definite. Now let's define a non-zero column vector z. It contains three numbers, z1, z2, and z3. For the matrix multiplication, we can expand it in this form. Then we calculate the product of the first two matrices. This is the 1 by 3 matrix, and this is the 3 by 3 matrix. So the result will be a 1 by 3 matrix. The first element will be the sum of this row times the first column. It is 2 z1 minus 2 z2. The second element will be the sum of this row times the second column. It is minus 2 z1 plus 2 z2. The third element will be the sum of this row times the third column. It is 4 z3. Now let's multiply this row by this column. This is the result. We find that this item must be greater than or equal to zero, so must this item. Therefore the sum should also be greater than or equal to zero. And this hash matrix is positive semi-definite based on the definition. Finally, we can conclude that this function is a convex function. The method I just introduced can be used to determine whether a function is convex or concave. 
it is applicable to functions with any number of variables. For a function with only two variables, there is an easier way to tell whether it is convex or concave. We need to calculate the second order partial derivative with respect to x1 only, a second order partial derivative with respect to x2 only, and their product minus the second order partial derivative with respect to x1 and x2 squared. If they are all greater than or equal to zero for all possible values of x1 and x2, then the two variable function is convex. If they are all greater than zero but not equal to, then the function is strictly convex. If the first two are less than or equal to zero and the last one is greater than or equal to zero, then the function is concave. If the first two are less than zero and the last one is greater than zero, then the function is strictly concave. With this table in mind, let's check this example. This is a two-variable function. The second-order partial derivative with respect to x1 only is 2. The second-order partial derivative with respect to x2 only is 2. The product minus the second-order partial derivative with respect to x1 and x2 is 0. Because the last one is zero, so the function is impossible to be strictly convex or strictly concave. Also, because the first two items, two and two, are not less than or equal to zero, so it cannot be concave. So we have eliminated the three possibilities. We can conclude that f x1, x2 is convex, but not strictly convex. Here is another example with two variables. It's just the opposite of the previous function. After calculation, we find these three items are negative 2, negative 2, and 0, respectively. Because the last one is 0, so the function is impossible to be strictly convex or strictly concave. Also, because the first two items, negative 2 and negative 2, are not greater than or equal to 0, so it cannot be convex.